Hey, friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to talk about recording acoustic guitars and how different microphones and positions and angles and even distances can all have a tremendous impact on the instrument that you're trying to record. So I've been doing a bit more recording here at the studio as of late and not just strictly mixing, and I'm working on a song for a buddy of mine. He brought his acoustic guitar over and I thought, this is perfect. I set up two different microphones at different positions and I captured the results. And so what I wanna do for today's video is really compare and contrast these different recordings of this particular performer and performance and instrument in this particular room. And for us to just go through and make some observations. I'll also point out which of these recordings was the chosen one for his song and mix. And I'll also do a little bit of processing of the acoustic guitar that we chose just to provide you with any clues or ideas for you know processing your own acoustic guitar tracks. So what we have in front of us here in Logic Pro is basically four sets of different recordings. And what we have here is the first set with two different microphones, placing the microphones at the sound hole position. Following, we have another two sets of microphones pointed at the neck of the guitar. After that, I captured a set of recordings from 20 inches away from the guitarist. And after that, I actually chose a pair of the same microphones and set them up in an XY configuration so I could capture both the sound hole and the neck position simultaneously. The microphones used for today's recording include the Aston Spirit, which is a large condenser microphone that provides three polar patterns, cardioid, figure eight, and also omni. For these recordings, I use the cardioid polar pattern. It also provides a high pass filter and a DB pad, neither of which were used for these recordings. In case you're wondering, I actually like the Aston Spirit a lot. It's only about $320, $350 US. And I've been using it pretty much exclusively for recording vocals. It has a nice modern presence to it without it sounding brittle and aggressive while still maintaining a nice low mid thing to it. And the other microphone used for these recordings was the Shure KSM-137, which is a small condenser microphone, also a cardioid pattern. And the KSM-137 also provides a DB pad and high pass filter, again, neither of which were employed for these recordings. I also really like the KSM-137s. I bought a pair of them specifically for the purpose of recording drum overheads. I feel like they have a nice focused and unhyped sound to them. The performances we're going to listen to are all chord-based rhythm guitar tracks. We also captured some pretty picked guitar performances, but honestly, the big rhythm guitar chords are gonna be the most obvious in terms of the differences between these microphones and placements. So what we'll do is I'm going to load the channel EQ, so we can see what's going on on the spectrum analyzer as we're listening. Also keep the notepad up so we can see the photo of where the microphones were placed for each of these recordings. And we're gonna start out by listening to the Aston Spirit pointed at the sound hole of the guitar. And then we'll listen to the Shure microphone and what that sounds like. And then we'll compare both of these back and forth side by side. So let's take a listen to the Aston Spirit. Here we go. Okay, so that's what the spirit sounds like. Let's take a listen to the Sure now, the KSM-137, and then we'll start to compare back and forth and make some observations. Here we go. Okay, cool. Let's now compare the two. Here we go. Isn't that interesting? These are two completely different sounding recordings of the same exact performance. So what microphone do you prefer? Personally, I prefer the Shure microphone over the Aston. I feel like it has a more focused sound and it has less of that chiminess around two to three K that exists on the Aston recording. Though it does have a resonance right around one K that I'm you know, not so hot on. If we take a listen again and compare the two, pay special attention right around here, two to three K in this recording. Do 
you hear that chiminess right around, you know, 2,500 hertz? Yeah, I'm not digging on that so much. We take a listen to the Shure microphone. That's got a resonance right around 1K, but I find overall I prefer the Shure. Okay, cool. So let's now take a listen to the neck position and how those compare. Start with the Aston once again. Okay, so that's a big difference from the sound hole position. Let's now take a listen to the sure at the neck position and then compare again. Here we go. Okay, let's now compare the two. Here we go. So, do you have a preference in this department with the neck position? For me, again, I prefer the Shure KSM-137. Sounds more focused to me. We still have that chiminess between 2 to 3K. But again, I just prefer the focus of the Shure microphone. And don't be misled that one microphone is obviously better than the other in every sort of context, because that's not the case. It's this particular performer, this particular instrument in this particular room, which by the way, I know you can see there are acoustic panels in this room, but this is just an office space that I've turned into my studio. It is not at all the perfect studio room by any means in terms of sonic results. Let's now take a listen to the Aston at the neck position versus the sound hole position so we can get a sense for what that sounds like. Here we go. Very interesting. Let's now compare the sure at the neck position and sound hole position as well. Here we go. Do you get a sense that we're making a trade-off here between these two positions? For some, the sound hole position might have more warmth or low-end stability or more authority, while to others, the sound hole position might sound too muddy or not articulate enough. While some might prefer the neck position because of that articulation and that brightness, and to others, the neck position might sound a little too brittle, a little too much fret noise, and not enough body. So I'm going to move the channel EQ up here. So we could take a listen to now the microphones placed about 20 inches away from the guitarist. Now let's get a sense of what this sounds like. We'll start with the Aston once again. Here we go. Okay, do you get a sense that there's more room ambience in this recording as compared to the other recordings? Let's now take a listen to the Sure and as well compare the two. Here we go. All right, let's now compare. All 
All right, do you have a particular recording that you prefer? There is no wrong answer. It's entirely up to you and what you prefer. Let's now compare the results of each position against the previous. So let's take a listen. And the sure. Here we go. Fascinating. Each position has its own benefits and consequences. Now let's take a listen to this XY pattern where I set up two of the Shure KSM 137s on a stereo bar in an XY configuration. So the capsules are at the exact same position. They're angled in opposite directions. The phase should be the same between the two microphones because they're recording at the exact same placement. I'm trying to capture both the sound hole and the neck simultaneously. So we'll take a listen to both of these microphones side by side as they're intended to be one recording. Let's take a listen. I threw in those other recordings just so we got a sense of what was going on in comparison to the other recordings that we have here. So ultimately we landed on this XY configuration. So now I'm gonna take a look, let's get rid of the channel EQ and I'm going to load a channel EQ on the track stack for both of these recordings and just apply a little bit of EQ and dynamic processing. So let's load that EQ. And the first thing I'm going to do is hone in on some of the chiminess of this recording, because again, it's popping up in an uncomfortable way and just kind of taking away, in my opinion, from the recording. So let's give it a try. I'm gonna create a peaking filter to try to find those chimey sounds and then reduce using the channel EQ. Here we go. Let's take a listen again and I'll bypass the EQ and bring it back. I'm making a deep cut into this acoustic guitar. It's quite aggressive, but I feel it makes a positive change. If Logic had a built-in dynamic EQ, I would probably use that. Let's now attend to that resonance right around 1K that is also poking out in an uncomfortable way. Let's create another peaking filter and go after it. Here we go. Well, that was a pretty lucky break. Let's take a listen to this band, both bypass and reintroduced. Here we go. And with the EQ, both bypass and reintroduced. I think that makes a pretty positive impact on this guitar track. The only other thing going on is that there's a bit too much boominess right around 100 hertz. 
And it makes sense. I mean, the microphones are pretty close to the guitar and the body tends to resonate quite a bit. So let's bring in the multi-presser. And the plan here is, is obviously we could try to use an EQ to reduce that boominess right at around 100 hertz. Let's take a look at the spectrum analyzer. Sometimes you can end up neutering your guitars a bit too much using just static EQ. So I plan on using the multi-presser to really tamp down on everything 490 hertz maybe and below just so when it gets really boomy at the bottom end, the multi-presser will compress on just the lower end of this guitar recording. Let's take a listen as I reduce the threshold. Here we go. And I haven't adjusted anything else. No ratio, no attack or release. I don't feel compelled to. But just like that, we have done a considerable amount for this acoustic guitar with the channel EQ and the multi-presser, which is a more dynamic way of tamping down on anything that's just a little too overpowering. So we take a listen to the before and end results. I'll bypass the plugins and reintroduce them. Here we go. So just like that, I think we made a tremendous improvement upon this acoustic guitar recording. And I hope throughout today's video, you've really picked up on that by playing with different microphones, if you have them, or different positions, angles, and distances, you can really achieve an acoustic guitar recording or a recording for any type of instrument that you are much more pleased with and happy with for your own productions and songs. So I hope today's video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, WhyLogicProRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, emails, or posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.